Whichever logo this filter lands on, I'm gonna give it a retro redesign. Ooh, Instagram, okay. So my idea for this one is basically to try to find a retro kind of cursive font. And then I wanna use this shape, but make multiple different arches around the font, but in these kind of colors. So I found a font I really like called Lovecraft, and I'm just gonna type out Instagram. I wanna go through and pick all of the colors from the Instagram logo, but kind of make them a little more muted. Okay, I've got my color palette picked out, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and create that square behind it that I was thinking about in each of the colors. So I didn't really think about that when I recreate these, there's gonna be this white gap in the edges, so I'm actually gonna have to pull these to the edge, and then the innermost ones are probably Probably just gonna have to be squares. Okay, I've got those all drawn out and now I just need to replace the Instagram logo in the middle, add a white stroke on there, and here is the final result. Honestly, I love how this one turned out. I love the idea of just taking the original colors and turning them more into a 70s vibe with the shapes and everything. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments. Whichever logo this filter lands on, I'm gonna give it a retro redesign. Okay, what are we gonna get? Ooh, PlayStation. Okay, it's already a little retro. Let's go. So my thought for this one is that we're gonna take this P and S and put them in block letters next to each other. And then I wanna take the rectangle from the P and almost make it look like it's like staggered until it trails off into nothing. So I found this font called Nougat and I'm gonna type out P, S. And I'm thinking to kind of give a little vibe to this S. I'm gonna skew the whole thing so it's almost italic. With the pen tool, I'm gonna recreate this exact shape right here so that I can make a bunch of duplicates in the different colors of the PlayStation logo and put them next to the original. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for each of these three colors. I want to add a stroke to the whole thing. And lastly, I want to go ahead and mute all of these colors just a bit. And here is the final result. This is like exactly how I envisioned it in my head. It looks so retro. It looks very like Atari, NASCAR. I don't know. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Whichever logo this filter lands on, I'm gonna give it a retro redesign. Okay, ooh, Starbucks. Okay, let's go. Okay, my idea for this one is to make it like a vintage diner logo with the Starbucks girl almost being like a pinup girl, kind of like something like along these lines. So I wanted to kind of sit on the logo, so I'm just gonna sketch out a general shape here. And because she has two tails, I wanna make one going up over here and make it kind of like a classic mermaid tail. I wanna give her a really pretty face with some red lipstick. Now I need to give her long, flowy hair. Okay, here's what we've got so far. Now I wanna add on her little crown and get a bunch of scales on there. Okay, that took forever. <laughs> Let's go ahead and color everything in. Okay, here's how that looks. Now I wanna make some kind of rectangle to go underneath her. I found this font called Quiska. I'm gonna type out Starbucks and here is the final result. This might be one of my favorite logo redesigns ever. I love the pinup design. It is just exactly what I was hoping and more in my head. Let me know what you think of this design in the comments. Whichever logo this filter lands on, I'm gonna give it a retro redesign. What are we gonna get? Ooh, FedEx. All right, let's go. Okay, so my plan for this one is to find a little bit more of a vintage font than this one, but then I wanna move the E and the D up on the level with the F. So then I have this room down here where I can add some things, like I'm thinking bringing back this arrow. So I found this font called Kimmy Retro that I love, and now I wanna make it be this orange, but maybe make it be a little more red. So we have something like this, and now I wanna move the E and the D up onto this level. Okay, since I wanna put the arrows down here, I'm gonna to need to make the F and the E extend all the way down. Add in those little rectangles and make little triangles for the arrows. So now all I have to do is repeat that a couple more times and here's the final result. This one looks maybe the most retro of any of the retro designs I've done. Like it actually looks like it could have been used in the 70s for FedEx. I am in love with it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Whichever logo this filter lands on, I'm gonna give it a retro redesign. Okay, 
mean, what's it gonna be? Spotify, all right, let's go. Okay, so what I'm thinking for this is to turn it into one of those vintage like microphones and then maybe do some kind of cool circle shape just to mirror this behind the microphone and then write out Spotify in some kind of retro font in the front. So the first thing I need to do is draw out that vintage microphone. Okay, I've got the top part drawn. Now I'm gonna draw on that base. I am loving how that looks so far. I brought it into Photoshop and I'm gonna add a green circle to the background. Okay, that's looking super cool. Now I wanna make a shape back here that kind of just looks like a banner. I found this really cool font called Market Deco and I'm just gonna move one half over on this side, the other on this side, skew the ever so slightly to match up with the top and here's the final result this one turned out so cool it's almost like too cool that it might be a little more modern than I was going for but honestly the little radio everything about it is definitely giving vintage but in the style of the current Spotify logo. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments today I'm gonna to be redesigning modern logos so they look vintage Up first we have Facebook. I wanted to go with a 60s inspired, like old Hollywood looking sign logo for this one. So I started by making a bunch of diamonds and making those be teal and pink. I typed out Facebook in this font called Capital, rearranged it all so it fit within the diamonds. And lastly I wanted to add the to it to make it the Facebook, like the original name. And here's the final result. I think this one looks exactly like what I was going for with that old sign look, and I really like this one. Up next we have Apple, which I wanted to give a kind of early internet feel to this logo. So I drew out this abstract shape Apple with the pen tool and Illustrator, rearranged it a little bit and worked with the colors. I typed out Apple in this font called Blakely, and I kind of shrunk it and moved it out to fit in this space. And here's the final result. I could definitely see this one at the top of like an old 90s internet browser. Up next we have Google, and I kind of wanted to go with the same effect as the first one. So I typed out Google in the font Jean Moderno, and I added all these bubbles behind all the letters, made them the colors of the Google logo, and then finally added this border to the whole thing, and here's the final result. This one's giving me Welcome to Vegas vibes, and I love it. Lastly, I did SpaceX. Again, with the pen tool, I made these kind of retro looking rocket shapes. I played around with adding a bunch of them, working on different strokes and textures, and then added a rectangle to the top. I put the word space in there, and for the X, I knew I wanted to go with kind of a vintage starburst effect for that. So I added that into a circle, and here's the final result. This one's giving me like vintage NASA patch on a spacesuit vibe. Let me know which one's your favorite in the comments. Today, I'm gonna to be redesigning modern logos so they look vintage. Up first we have the TikTok logo. I really wanted to make this one look kind of 70s inspired, so I went online and found a font called Bunky Dory and I typed out TikTok in Illustrator. I decided to give that a stroke that was the blue color from the TikTok logo, and then I gave it this kind of gradient looking drop shadow and here's the final result. This one turned out exactly how I was hoping it to and honestly I would really love this on a t-shirt. Up next we have Snapchat, and my idea for this one was a 1920s kind of art deco logo. A lot of these logos have very geometric shapes and a lot of gold and black, so I decided to try to kind of make the outline of the Snapchat ghost, but using geometric shapes. I drew that out on my iPad just to kind of get a gist of it, then I brought that into Illustrator and started actually making the shape. Once I was happy with how that looked, I typed out Snapchat in this font called Capital, and I noticed on a lot of these old logos they had the established date, so I ended up putting that at the top, and here's the final result. I think this ghost looks so cute, and it came out exactly how I was picturing it. Up next we have Tesla and I thought it'd be funny if I did this in kind of like an 80s or 90s really colorful logo. So I found this font called Zubilo and typed out the T and the Tesla and then I added a bunch of just like old geometric looking shapes and here's the final result. It's giving me very much like MTV or like an old solo cup type of vibe and I love it. Lastly I chose to do Duncan and I wanted it to kind of look like a 50s diner feel. So I typed out Duncan and it's actually in this font called Dr. Sugiyama and I decided to make the I be an old like vintage starburst. Then I typed out donuts and I put them in a bunch of little circles. I added a very geometric like looking shape in the background and add a little line and here's the final result. If Duncan did like a vintage pop-up, I could definitely see them doing something like this. Well, that is it for this video. I am in love with how all four of these came out. If I had to pick a favorite, it's really hard, but honestly the Snapchat one, I feel like kind of goes the hardest, but also the Dunkin' Donuts one looks the best on that sign. So. 
Who's to say? If you like this video, I'm gonna try to put out some more long form content like this on YouTube. So definitely subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know which logos you want me to give vintage redesigns to next. And let me know which one's your favorite in the comments. Today, I'm gonna be redesigning the current Patriots logo to look vintage. My idea for this one was to make it kind of look like a vintage American sign that might be hanging up in a restaurant. Now the Patriots already have a vintage logo from 1960, so I decided to kind of put my own spin on that. I wanted to make the main shape of the logo be the old hat from the other logo. So I started by drawing that out in Illustrator. I found this font called Scriptorama, and I wanted to keep the star from the new logo and make that the I in Patriots. Then I typed out New England in this font and gave it an arch effect. And here's when things kind of started going off the rails. I started making a bunch of like organic shapes, like one that looks like a football and a couple other ones in the background. It just started getting to the point where I really disliked it. I tried changing the shape in New England and then I realized I just wanted to go with my original plan with just the hat and Patriots. So I started tweaking those and then I finally came up with something I'm happy with. This is the final result. I think this has a very classic feel and would look really good on something like a sweatshirt or a football helmet. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now today I decided I'm going to redesign four modern logos. Target, Minecraft, Twitter, and Nintendo. I tried to give each one of these a different feel like they're from a different decade. So some of them are more 70s and 80s inspired, while some of them go back to more like the 40s the 50s. I originally made all of these on a live stream here on the channel. I'm going to be going live once a week after work and it's a lot of fun to kind of get your all's inputs on which logos I should do, how they should look. So definitely check that out if you're interested in collaborating on the next video. All right, let's get into it. So for this one, I started with Target and they're really one of the only ones on this that actually have an older logo, but even that one just looks very similar to the current one. So I wanted to go in a completely different direction. So my idea for this one is that I wanted to make it look similar to an old dartboard using more muted colors. I didn't want it to look extremely uniform because I feel like a lot of 50s logos had a lot of organic shapes in them. So I wanted to make each slice of the dartboard like a slightly different shape. So in order to do this, I went ahead and drew two circles using the shape tool in Adobe Illustrator and I put one inside the other. Then I took the pen tool and I drew out from the centermost point and made the basic overall shape of each slice. Then grabbing the circles and the triangle, I opened up the Pathfinder window and hit divide. This then made the slices be cut out and you can double click on the parts you want to delete and you're left with the outer ring and the inner rings as their own shapes, but still part of that slice. So I continued doing this around the whole pie until I had each one cut out. Then using this old dartboard I found as a reference, I colored all the different slices and rings until I was happy with how it looked. And my idea for the word target was to make the top of the T look like an old dart. So I found a reference on Google and then using the pen tool, I drew the top of the dart. And the cool thing about this is if you draw the dart and then you draw the bottom, a perfectly flat line, you can copy the shape from the top and flip it horizontally and then move it down to match and use the shape holder tool to connect the two so you have one shape that's perfectly symmetrical on the top and the bottom. So next I found a font on Adobe Fonts and this one is called Fino Sans and I typed out target in that font and I played around with the sizing of the T with the dart and I worked on the placement a bit and then here is the final result. I could not be happier with how this turned out. I feel like this is one of my favorite things I've ever made for this channel or my TikTok. I love how the dart looks like it's just about to make contact with the board. I love the font and all the colors I chose and I'm also just really happy with how I made the slices not be perfectly uniform. I feel like the changes in the sizes make it look more dynamic and give it more movement. It feels more alive if that makes sense. Okay, up next I have Minecraft and I wanted to pick a real blocky font for this one since obviously Minecraft is made up of mostly all blocks. I found this font called Aerotech Ultra, typed out Minecraft, and I wanted to put a box above that so that combined with the word Minecraft, it made a perfect square. So I made that out and my idea was to make it be different rectangles that made a gradient down toward the word Minecraft. I made these rectangles to act as a spacing reference so that it was the same space from the bottom of the rectangle to Minecraft as each of the spaces in between. And then I decided to kind of play around with how I wanted to make the rectangles look. So once I was happy with the placement and the sizing of everything, I selected it all and used the minus front option from the Pathfinder window to remove all the little spaces in between the rectangle. Initially, I thought I might just do it in green and brown to kind of match what the main ground block looks like in the game. But then I decided to make the top of it be green, the brown in the middle, and then gray at the bottom to kind of mirror all the different layers in Minecraft. 
Like when you dig down, it goes from grass to dirt to rock. So I made everything the right colors by using the actual pieces from the game as a reference. And finally, I knew that I wanted to make the zombie face be somewhere in the logo since it's actually in the A in the original logo. So I played around with the placement a bit and I finally landed on putting it in the R and here is the final result. I also really like this one. I feel like it looks like it could be on like a vintage 70s t-shirt. I love how the colors turned out and the gradient and I like that it kind of references the actual game. But it looks like you'd be playing this one on like an Atari system instead of on your phone or the computer. Okay, next we have Twitter and I actually found in doing some research for this that the Twitter bird, people think it looks like this species called the blue naped monarch. So I decided to use that as a reference and give it a more hand drawn feel for this one. I did this by using the pen tool, giving it a stroke, and changing the setting so that the corners and edges were rounded. If you're not familiar with how the pen tool works, it works by selecting, clicking to make a point, and then clicking somewhere else to make a connecting point. And when you make that second point, you can drag to give it a curve. And then the next point that you make, it'll automatically follow that curve unless you tell it not to. So I did this with basically the whole bird and I wanted to give it kind of my style. So I made the beak a little stylized. I added in some lines where there really weren't lines to kind of give it an effect that looks like feathers. And once I was happy with the outline of this, I wanted to give it a bit of a grounding effect because right now it just looks like it's floating in thin air, but like not actually flying. <laughs> so I added a blue circle around it and I, Kind of wanted it to look like the Twitter blue, but a little more muted since a lot of these vintage logos are a little more muted. And I played around with the placement of this uh, for a while until I was happy with it. I also went ahead and made the beak and the tail white. And then I found this font called Acer Bat Text Noir, which is very fancy sounding font, but it looks very fancy. <laughs> and when I put it over the blue, the letters were actually transparent. So I just gave it a white background by uh, typing out Twitter and then using the pen tool to fill in the background and then making the font come to the front so that the white was behind it. And the last step was I just added a tiny little white highlight in the eye to kind of give it that twinkle effect and here's the final result. I feel like this one could be like a design for an old bar or a speakeasy type of sign. I could see it on a street sign, on an old menu, even like on the side of an old white van maybe. I think the hand-drawn look with the pen tool turned out better than I could have hoped. This is actually one of the first times I've been using the pen tool to do an illustration and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I also like that I threw in the blue element so that it kind of references the modern logo. All right, last but not least, we have Nintendo. My idea for this one was to give it a bitmap feel so that it kind of looked like an old Nintendo game. And when I was looking at the history of Nintendo, they actually go back way into like the 1800s, but not a single one uses this bitmap technique. So to start, I found this font called Low Res 9 Narrow Bold. And I wanted to give this one a 70s or 80s kind of colored gradient, just because when I think of vintage video games, I think of like 80s arcade games. So I found a reference for those colors. I typed out Nintendo in the low res font and gave the letters outlines. Then I played around with the kerning a little bit to make it more tighter and uniform. I made the letters go from this burnt red all the way to this very muted light yellow. And when I was happy with that, I made these two arches on the end to kind of nod to the modern pill shape of the logo right now. And also I just feel like arches signify retro design and they were used in a lot of retro designs. And I messed around a little bit with the colors until I finally landed on this. Again, I couldn't be happier with this one. I think all four of these are some of my favorite designs I've ever made. I feel like this one's a little understated, but it reads exactly how I was hoping it would. I feel like you could see this logo on the side of an old Nintendo arcade game and you wouldn't even know that it was a redesign. I love the color choices and how it's just kind of inspired by those old Nintendo video games. Well, that is it for me today. Obviously, I'm really happy with how these turned out, but let me know what you think in the comments. I decided to do four modern logos and give them a vintage look. Last time I did this, I threw in a couple that were more like 90s designs, but this one, I wanted to stick to more like 70s and even further back to see what these logos would look like before the internet. So today, the ones we're gonna be redesigning are YouTube, Starbucks, MTV, and Tesla. I actually redesigned Tesla in a vintage style in a previous video, but I really, looking back on it, did not like it. So this is kind of a redemption story for that one. 
So I'm gonna start with YouTube. And when I was researching for this, I found that a lot of vintage logos used arrows in the design. Like kind of like, come in, we're open. And I definitely knew that I wanted to keep the play button somewhere in there. So my initial idea was to kind of take the play button triangle and incorporate it into an arrow. So first I got to work finding a font. If you have the Adobe Suite, I would definitely recommend using Adobe Fonts because they have so many different categories to look at. And once you log into your account, you can actually just toggle the fonts on and off and they automatically will appear in your Illustrator, Photoshop, Premiere, whatever you're using. So for this one, I knew I wanted a bolder font. So I decided to look in the Art Deco category and I ended up finding this great one called Casablanca URW. So after toggling it on, I opened Illustrator and typed out YouTube in that bold font. I love how on this one, all of the letters are kind of condensed, but the O is a perfect circle. I just love that. I picked up an initial color, wanting to keep the red from the original logo, but go with a more burnt 70s red instead of a bright one. So then I just duplicated one of the T's so that I would have the exact width of the font and manipulated it so that it would look like the Y was an extended bar, like all the way across the word. I connected those using the Shape Builder tool and I made a play button that I turned yellow. I was really loving how this was looking, but it did look a little top heavy to me. So I played around a bit with moving some of the letters down toward the end to make the triangle fit a little bit better. And I added another bar beneath the whole word YouTube. I went back and forth on this, but decided just to move the E down at the end of the day. And I was really loving how this looked, but I wanted one last thing to make it look a little bit more vintage. And what's more retro than a drop shadow? So I played around just a bit with the colors and finally I landed on this. I am really happy with how this one turned out. I'm definitely seeing that 70s vibe here and it kind of reminds me of a logo that you would see on the back of like an old van or even like a bumper sticker on a car in the 70s. Either way, it turned out a lot better than I was even envisioning in my head. And I think this would be cool if YouTube were to launch some kind of like retro merch with a fake vintage logo. I would love to see something like this. Up next, I'm doing Starbucks. And for this one, I kind of wanted to go with a vintage 50s diner slash cafe feel. For the fonts, I wanted Starbucks to be in a kind of script font. And I wanted to include the word cafe in it to really give it that old timey feel. So I actually found this one called emo type kitten <laughs> that I thought would work perfectly for the script part of the logo. I actually made these logos while on a live stream and one of my subscribers suggested using a font called Betty Noir and that worked perfectly for the word cafe. On that note, I do go live once a week, usually on Wednesdays. And if you wanna have your suggestions used in a future video, definitely drop into one of those lives and say, hey. Now, I know back then they had a lot of overlapping shapes and colors. So I created these two shapes using the pen tool. And then I made the edges way less sharp and made them different shades of green, different sizes, just to kind of contrast those two shapes. Initially, I thought I would give the words a color, but I really liked how Starbucks looked in black when I typed it all out on this lime green. I made cafe white and I thought about doing a black stroke on that one as well. But then I decided to actually make it the dark green from the background so that it kind of looked like it was built into behind it and was kind of popping up through the front green one. And I really am happy with that choice. So finally, I thought it would be cool to incorporate stars somewhere on it since the word star is in the name. And because a lot of old hotel logos when I was looking at this have stars on it to, to say that they're like a five star hotel. So I decided to do three at the top and someone suggested rounding out the corners a little bit to make the stars a little less harsh but I felt like it needed five stars to make it complete. So I put two more at the bottom and here is that logo all finished. I really feel like this one feels the oldest, most vintage of the bunch today. But in the end, it ended up being one of my favorites for sure. Can't you just see yourself being in a vintage cafe or diner and a waitress comes up to you wearing an apron and a visor that has this logo on it? For MTV, I really knew that I wanted to play with this bold, playful, scripted font and give it that kind of 70s black outline and drop shadow, almost like you would see on an old baseball jersey or something like that. So I hunted down a font and landed on one called Kestrel Script. So to give all of it that black stroke, I had to make them all one shape with the Shape Builder tool. I also made the fill of it be closer to like an off-white instead of just white. And I used the Warp tool to give it a little bit of rise. And then I needed to make the shadow. So to do this, I duplicated the shape 
but made the fill be black. Then I duplicated that one and I made it offset and I put both of those under the initial shape. I then selected both of those black shapes and I went to object, blend, blend options and turned it to specified steps and I made that a really high number and then I hit make. So basically what that does is it makes a ton of tiny duplicates between the shapes and it gives it a drop shadow without those hard lines like you see in the YouTube one. It's a perfect seamless shadow from one shape to the other. Initially, I was gonna do a TV behind the letters, but someone in the chat suggested doing a vinyl record. So I created that using circles and worked on the placement. And then I decided to make that in pink and blue. And I made these little triangular shapes in white to look like highlights. And I placed three of them around the record. And here is the final result. I love how this one looks too. I know I'm saying that for all of them, but it's true. I know MTV has been around since the 80s, but I think if they were around more in the 60s, 70s, I'm thinking kind of like Hairspray, how they had that afternoon dance variety show. This looks like a logo that you might see on a TV back then. I also know I say this every time too, but I would really like this design on a shirt, but unfortunately there are copyright laws. Okay, this is our last one for today. It's Tesla and we are giving it its redemption arc. So when I was looking up a logo for this one, I realized that their actual name is Tesla Motors, which to me evokes the sense of like an old auto body shop. And it got me thinking about all these vintage logo signs that I still see up all around LA that include a lot of Starburst and fun colors. And I actually ended up doing some research on this kind of design. And it turns out it's actually a design style from between the 40s and the 60s, and it was called Atomic Age. So I wanted to make the background be this big teal Starburst. So I made some star shapes with the shape tool and I played around with the sizing to form this really big Starburst shape. I kind of wanted to mimic the Starbucks one and do Tesla in a scripted font and the rest in a different font that I could find. So I actually found this one called Scriptorama Trade Show for the word Tesla. And I typed it out and I made it this hot reddish pink color. And I was gonna give it a black stroke again, but then I decided to go with a white one because I feel like that made it look a little bit more seamless from the background. I then searched the funky category of fonts on Adobe and I found this awesome one called Custard for the Motors part. I typed that out and I made these rectangles with red outlines around each letter. Then I made the spacing staggered until I was happy with the placement of all of them. And once I looked at it, the whole thing looked a little bit bare. So I decided to give the Starburst some little dots in it to hint that there's kind of like light bulbs. And I changed the color last minute to this more greenish teal. And finally, I was happy to call it done. This one really looks like something that you would see on TV for what they thought the future of logos would look like. And I absolutely love it. It isn't too often that I walk away at the end of one of these videos actually really loving every detail of everything I created but I have to say I really do for these. It's really hard, but if I had to pick a favorite, I actually think I would go with the Tesla Motors one. Mostly just because it's really fun and playful, yet it looks like it could actually have been a real logo back in the day. Well, that is it for today's video. If you can pick a favorite logo, definitely let me know which one it is in the comments. And if you have any other ideas for which modern logos I can turn vintage in the future, definitely let me know that as well.